everyone to episode 14 of the Circle Back Podcast, a show where two great friends get together and just talk about video games. Um, I'm Dan Lamarca. As always, I'm joined by Dan Dufordoy. Hola. And uh, Dan, let's kick it off like we always do. What have you been playing? All right. Well, I've been playing uh, a lot of games. Not really. I actually had a very slow week, but I have been playing the Shadow of the Colossus remaster. Mm. That's still something that's been on my radar. Um, yeah. And it's just it's just so good. And, it's so good. You know, we, we I know we did a remaster episode, but if every remaster was came as good out as the Shadow like of the Colossus remaster and was like fucking just steps everything up, yeah. makes the controls better, yeah. camera looks better, everything is better about this game. What I what I love about it and why like I can keep going back to it is like especially, you know, if you're having a busy week or something, it doesn't like command that much, you know, time. Yeah. You can just, you know, go in, just like I'm gonna play, you know, a boss, you know, yep. yada yada yada. Yep. And every time, it's that same feeling, it's that same majesty, it's that yeah. same intrigue. No, it just it, it never never gets dull. It's incredible. <clears throat> I beat it this past week. Okay. Um, absolutely loved it. Just just like <laughs> just like the first time I played it and the second time I played so it. So good. It's such a great game and. The thing about this remaster, and I've said, I don't know if I've said to you or I've said to other people, but it's like, the way that Shadow of the Colossus is built on the size and the scale and like, kind of, you said the majesty, it's mm-hmm. like, this remaster does everything, it just amps it up yeah. in such a good way that like, you're looking at the cliff sides and they look so big mm-hmm. and the definition of the, of the graphics now like really add to what that game is doing. Like a lot of games, you all right, you enhance the graphics, doesn't do that much for me. It's like this game specifically, what it's going for is so enhanced yeah. by this update that it's just like, this is the definitive way to play it now. Easily. I agree, and, and I think it just adds to the fact that this, you know, what they did, it, I could, it just adds more and more clout to the name Shadow of the Colossus and like, you know, yeah. I really... No, they did such a great job. Some of the greatest video games of all time, it, it definitely... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's up there for sure. There's moments I, too even where, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to cut you yeah, off. Yeah. Um, like, I always, it always changes every playthrough. And like I said, the first time I'm playing the remastered, but like who my favorite class I is and what mm-hmm. I'm playing. And even just, I want to say it's the fourth one. The one where you got to hide in the tunnels and like the guy's got the long... Beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he'll look in like this. But just even that, where like you're just like in the bottom of yeah. like the like this tomb, and like yeah. you just see the, the big eye, just like look, and it's like it's the craziest thing. Yeah, and it's just yeah. that sort of feeling of. Uh, yeah, the, I mean, you know, this this isn't this isn't anything new that I'm telling you right now, but like I would say the same stuff ten years ago. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm like, saying. <laughs> the designs, you know, the colossi, the, the colossus designs, <clears throat> the environmental designs are like totally unmatched still to this day and i've said it before as well it's like the the games that i love like we're talking about dark souls and those kind of games Mm -hmm. they totally borrowed from these game this game specifically in that scope and size of everything around you the environment and the creatures you know what i mean like just looking at these like coliseums and like how huge they are and stuff like that it really there's something about this game that makes you feel so small yeah but yeah i I wanted to say something i never noticed before uh i don't know if i don't know if you remember when when you do when you beat the game and you're doing the end credits it kind of goes through each colossus right right right. and it's how it is now and how like the nature is like overtaking its body kind of Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it'll show like one that you killed in the grass is like has grass growing over it and some plants and stuff. If you go back to where you took them down in the game, did you know that, that stuff's there? No. I don't know if it was in the first one or not because I never noticed it, but I I was I was just getting all the shrines, there's like twenty six shrines to pray at or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was getting all the shrines and I had to cross back where do you know the the desert like snake one yeah, that's yeah. under under the sand? I went back to that spot when I was doing the shrines. And it was like buried in sand, like its body was like buried in sand, and it looked all like Whoa. yeah, it was really fucking cool. I I just I don't know if that was in the original or not because it had been it has been what seven years at least six years since I've played it last, so I don't mm-hmm. remember if that was in there or not. Um, but if this is a new thing to this game, that's it's pretty fucking cool. yeah. incredible. Now you can enlighten me. Uh, 
the ending of the game is that the does that is that eco is that like when he, the little kid with horns is that yeah i think so yeah okay I, I i don't know i i never really looked into like what the story yeah, is yeah, was like, remember, it, he, i was, was like okay, i it's... always assumed that it was because once you had all the mm-hmm. all the things in you and you become like the kind of zombie like thing once you have all the black yeah you know <laughs> demon in yeah, you, yeah yeah uh as you're walking before like he, they shoot you with the arrow or whatever as you're walking you have horns mm-hmm. And then obviously once once you know the wave comes through and they like stop you from be- becoming a demon or whatever, then you see, you basically see the baby in, in right. this little okay. thing and it's yeah, got yeah, the yeah. horns. Mm-hmm. So I've always assumed that Eco was right after. The thing that I'm curious about, talking specifically about the story, that I hadn't really considered before is, they break that bridge. On their way out, the men on horses, you know, that giant bridge that leads right. to like the main world. Uh-huh. So they shatter the bridge as they're going out. Right. And so the girl wakes up. The girl wakes up with the baby and she has no way to get anywhere else except for in this area. Oh, crap. So I, I always wondered if it was because we're talking about, all right, Eco might be a continuation of Shadow mm-hmm. of the Classes, but the architecture. Doesn't seem to doesn't seem that. to line up. So I don't know if that's definitely is what it is, or if somehow they get out of there, mm-hmm. or you know whatever it is. But the the implication at the end of that is, is that like, that is... hey, she's stuck there <laughs> with this baby yeah. forever. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It really fantastic game. I'm so glad to have played it again, and I'm just so happy that they did well, such that's a good so, job. That's what we were saying. Like, it's so funny we talk about remasters, and we're like, ah, oh, like. Eh. Like, should we like remasters? Now, but like, it does it so good. But know? I will also preface that statement by saying we specifically said we're going to get the Shadow Classes. Yeah, that's true. And I'm going to get true. the Dark Souls one in May. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to happen. So th- that's when we when we had the discussion about it. Are we saying, do we just get the ones we like and say, screw the rest? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's always the argument. Right. But I, I'm this game particularly did so much good for the game mm-hmm. that I already loved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm super happy. It's just it. perfect. Yeah, it's so good. Um, another game that you've played that we're going to talk about in a minute is okay. the original Metal Gear Solid. Yes, um, I have. We're going to wait on that because we have a new idea. We're going we're gonna to let you guys know. Um, so first, I'll talk about Celeste. Mm, um, please do. I beat Celeste as well. I know last time, you know, a couple weeks ago, <clears> we, we said that you had beaten Celeste and you really liked it. I beat it. I fucking love this game. Beautiful I game. think it is... One of the best platform stories in a platformer mm-hmm. I've played. It's really, really good. Um, I have some other thoughts about it that we're actually going to talk about later as well. Um, but for now, I just want to say Celeste is incredible. It's challenging, um, but it's really fun. And the story is well worth the challenge. Um, so if you like platformers at all, play Celeste. It's or actually- if you just like story games. I mean, the story yeah, honestly, is just... Yeah. The problem is if you're not if you're not platformer centric, yeah, that's true. It's gonna be tough. That's true. I gotta say though, with the platforming, and I don't know if we mentioned this on the podcast before, but like compared to like other heavy platformer games like mm-hmm. this, I feel like it's never like punishing. Like you can be like a really yeah. hard level, but like the learn the, there's a, like a good enough learning curve that like yeah. if you are stuck with enough practice and enough, you'll get it. That's true. You know? It's not like it's not like you were going to bang your head against it that much. Right, the exactly. problem, the, the thing about Celeste specifically, I think, is because they have a new gimmick in each level, mm-hmm. some of those gimmicks are going to be harder for you than others. Right. And I, the third one, actually, the hotel with Oshiro, <laughs> yeah. was by far the hardest one for yeah. me. Because I just, the timing of those That's things That's what the circling, red monsters yeah, too. Yeah, the timing of those, mm-hmm. I just couldn't, it was really tough for me. Because I would like jump and then see an opening and jump, and this guy was already coming. Yeah, up, it gets you know? harder, especially towards the end of the level, where like the, the way that the red mon- the red goop monster yeah. is like, and you gotta like jump and then yeah. angle and then yeah. angle. You know, I, I mean, I really enjoy that level, but that one took me longer than even the final level. Yeah, because I, I just didn't. There are certain things that are easier for you naturally and harder right. for you. Yeah. So it's like somebody might play that Oshiro level and be like, "Piece no, of that cake." Wasn't so bad. But for me, that was the toughest one. Also, I want to say, um, I got all the crystal hearts. Yeah, good for you. I, I did. I did the eighth, the, you know, the secret world, and that's really tough. But that was really, really fun to do. Yeah. Um, Is there any came, more to the story? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Not, not. 
explicitly, but it's interesting on like what the mountain is and mm. stuff like that. It's, it's cool. Okay. I, I would I would recommend checking it out if you have the opportunity, or maybe just look it up on YouTube or something. <laughs> no, I, mean, I have the game. Why not? Yeah. yeah, but if you don't want to go find all the Crystal well, Hearts, yeah, they're, I, they're I love tough. that game enough. You know, yeah, right true. now I'm in a Metal Gear kick though. I know it's gonna be hard to pull you away. I know. Um, so that's the <clears> last. Uh, again, highly recommend it. It's on PS4, Switch. Um, yeah, like you said, I, th- I think uh, at the end of the year, I think it could be definitely... Uh, yeah, I, we got to vow to ourselves not to forget how good Celeste was. Yeah, no, seriously, exactly. <laughs> because... No, but you know, there's sort of games that come out early in the year. I mean, remember when The Witness came out? And that was like, by the end of the year, that was the only game we were talking about. Yeah, for, you that's know. true. Yeah, I... Um, but let's try not to forget. Don't make it... Let's be forget. And I mean, to be honest with you, last year had a lot of good games early. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm sure we won't forget. But Celeste... Really, really like that game. We'll make a note. Um, I'll tattoo it on my arm. Yeah, perfect. You'll never forget. Um, another game that I've been playing, it actually came out last year, um, is the expansion to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. Okay? So, XCOM, I've talked about it before. I love the XCOM games. Mm-hmm. Love Enemy Within. Uh, what XCOM 2, when XCOM 2 originally first came out, I really, really liked it. I think it had a couple flaws that like I didn't love, but I was like, it's a great fucking game. War of the Chosen fixes so much of what I didn't like about XCOM 2, and it adds in all these crazy layers that I really fucking like. Like, War of the Chosen is absolutely one of the better expansions I've played. Um, the base idea, story-wise, is that there are these two factions, at least in the beginning. I'm only a few hours in. Uh, there are these two factions that hate each other. One faction is, so I don't know if you know anything about XCOM, but the whole idea is in XCOM 2, so in XCOM 1 at the end, the aliens win. Okay. And they take over the Earth. So they end up making it like a fascist state where, you know, you have to check into a gene therapy clinic every once in a while to get a little bit more alien. You know what I mean? They're kind of like converting people and like, using human DNA to create abominations kind of thing. But they live, they've they created these, like, pristine cities that are, like, beautiful, yeah. but they're, like, you know, you can't really do anything in them because there's soldiers walking around all the time. So the soldiers are called the Advent. And in this game, one of the factions that you have, like, there are two factions. You're basically the middleman between these two factions that hate each other. And you're trying to bring them together. Okay. And say, like, hey, all three of us need to form. We all hate the Advent. We all need to take back Earth. The three of us need to get together, join forces, you know, kick out the Advent. So the one faction is this group of basically, like, a rebellion that used to be, like, they're, like, ex, like, poor people or slaves or whatever. But they were, it's basically, they were captives of the Advent. And they broke out and started a resistance and, like, whatever. The other side is ex-Advent, like, aliens that are now, like, they, they've they been freed. Like, the guy, Mox, that I met, the first one that I know, he's like, I'm a free Advent. Like, I haven't, I guess they have some sort of brain control where they can okay. control. And it, once that's removed or whatever, they I don't know the details. Themselves, kind of. yeah, yeah, so now he's thinking for himself and he's like, I, I hate these guys, like, we need to take them out. Awesome. So it's really fucking cool to see, you know, they set up, it's a lot of cheesy action stuff with like, you know, when they first meet, they're like, are wanting to kill each other, like aiming guns, (laughs) and like, you know, but it's fun. It's like, it's like a fun action thing. But what I love about it is the way these characters play, because you control them on the battlefield, like you get different of these advent group and that uh, rebel group, you get different characters from them and they, they have, like, a few different classes each. So it's, like, adding in all these new types of, of units that you never had before. So it's, like, first of all, having, like, trying all these new things, like, like these, the skirmisher, the, the, the ex-advent guys, they have this, like, grappling hook. So they can grapple up to a high place without using an action. Or they can grapple an enemy and pull them up to them and stab them. Oh, okay. Like, scorpion style from Mortal Kombat. Cool, yeah. Yeah. And it's fucking awesome. But it's, like, having stuff like that, added into a game that you already love is just like such a cool thing that's awesome yeah so i'm really enjoying that uh another big twist in this game is that there are like they're basically like hero enemies so they're called the chosen war of the chosen 
uh, they can pop into your match. Like, while you're, like, fighting other guys, it'll just be, like, beam down. There's a Chosen here. It's, like, a super powerful enemy. And uh, you basically need to whittle down its health low enough to make it run away. Okay. And you do that a few times, and then you finally get to fight it and try to kill it for good. And it's that tactics. It's the same style, right? Yeah, it's the same, same style. Of, yeah. It's you have a grid. You can only move certain space. You know, you have two actions, so you can move twice mm-hmm. as far, or you can move once and then shoot. You know, it's the the basics of XCOM is so solid, yeah. and it always has been. That to just be adding onto it in in a good way, and not in a way that it's like oh, I don't really like this. It has been really, really nice. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm happy for you because I know how much uh, you love the... Yeah. I, I love XCOM in general and I love tactics games, but this is way up there for me as okay. far as tactics. Way, I like it way better than the base XCOM 2. And yeah, it's it's really great. Um, That's awesome, man. Yeah. Anyone that likes tactics, play it. It's, it's fucking really good. I just got it on sale. I think it was 25 bucks for this whole expansion. On oh, my PS4? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What was that game? I digress, but what was, what was that game? I remember where um, you had it on, the, on your computer and like you were like the secret agents. Oh, Invisible Ink. That's what it was. Invisible yeah. Ink. Yeah. God damn, that game is so good. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, Invisible Ink, really good. That tactical. was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was cool. I remember I we. Play that I, game no, again. I remember we were just sitting like for like three hours, just like, <laughs> oh, should I go this way? Should I go? That was fun. Yeah, that game. I, I guess I like tactics games. I don't know. They're, they're you never me, play them, though. They're, they're tough for me to, like, get into. But, yeah. like, I mean, Transistor was kind of like that in a way. Was, yeah. You know? like Well, Transistor uh, was very tactical. Yeah. And it, was, it was turn-based. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Eh, maybe I'll give it a shot. It's up to you. Why not? I know you're playing a lot of different stuff. I mean, I got some... I got to, you know, up the ante a little bit. A uh, game that I've been playing for a while now, and I love still playing PUBG. You're obsessed. I, but it's it's funny because it's like I I don't play it that much, but I try to get in a couple games a week no matter what. You know, try to get friends on playing. It's it's just such a fucking good game. PUBG is so good, and it never it it continues to have that like I played back to back games the other day, and in one game I was the fifth man alive, and in the next I was the fourth man alive. You know what I mean? So it was like. When you get down to it and the circle's that small, yeah, like the, the the feeling. I know I've said it before, but like that tension is totally unrivaled. Like you're in there and you're just looking around the whole time. And you're like, where are they? Where are they? like where are these guys? You'll see someone walk by and you're like, do I shoot? Give away my position or do I just let them go? Like it's such a, it's a fucking awesome game. <laughs> I love PUBG. <laughs> I I can't wait for the, the best part is. I'm going to play it for a full year on Xbox, and then it's going to come to PS4, and then I'm going to play yeah, with all my PS4, friends that only yeah. have PS4, and it's just, yeah, that, that's one of my forever games, for That's sure. awesome. That, that, that'll go into the Pantheon with, with Dota 2 and Rocket League as, as my games that I just play and play. And Always, play. So, yeah. Speaking of Rocket League, I started playing that a little bit, too. Yeah. Uh, me and my friend Ozzy jump back on. We're playing a little bit. Um, that's a fun game. You get, Rocket you're, you're pretty good at Rocket so League. Yeah. Good, dude. <laughs> Rocket League is so good, dude. That's a perfect example. We've been playing that game since it came out. Yeah. In 2015? Yeah. Yeah. Came out the same year as Phantom Pain. Rocket League, I've been playing It just for, doesn't get old. Yeah, it it just, never it gets just, old. It, it is old. so good. Because it has those hooks of like a pure, really well-made competitive... Or anyone that doesn't know Rocket League, it's... It's 3v3 in the, in the base game, at least. 3v3, your little RC cars, but you're zoomed in super close so they look like regular cars, and you're hitting this real regular size soccer, like a giant soccer ball, pretty much. And there's two goals on either side. You're inside this like crazy walled like force field, and it's just pure like three on three. Yeah. Get the ball in the net. You know, when time runs out, whoever's whoever's up wins. It is the thing about that game is. It has that thing that I talk about when I when I just mentioned PUBG, Dota 2. It has that thing where it's like, it's super fun to learn throughout the time, but you're never at your peak. Like, you can always get better. It's so hard to get really good at Rocket League. Yeah, and I've gotten good at Rocket League, but we can play guys that are flying around in the air, never touching the ground. Yeah, it's and insane. Just if you watch, like the, like, the professional players, and yeah. they're just like, oh, I've watched a few matches, yeah. they barely touch yeah, the ground. No, not at all. So it's like, <laughs> it's for cool. a game that's that's so well made that the skill ceiling is that high, yeah. 
and it's just a really fun experience. It's like those are the kind of games that I will stick with forever yeah. and just play once in a while, play once in a while. Like when, whenever we have the inkling to play. The best is those moments where you just get like a nice straight shot right into the ball and it just go like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. The problem is like as you get up, as you get like a, like higher in skill and you're playing guys that are better, it's like you need to set up actual plays yeah. or you're not going to win. Yeah. Like I can't just hit the ball and score yeah. ever. Like I need to hit it and try to get it to be in the air near the goal so that my guy can fly in and hit it in. Like it's like you need to actually set up nice plays. Um, Rocket League's incredible. I'm I'm happy to be playing a little bit again. Um, I've also been doing a little bit of Dragon Ball Fighters. Hey, you love um, that game, bro. It's really good. I always see on the PS4, it's always like, you know, when it says, like, oh, what are your friends playing? It's like, Dan's playing Dragon Ball. <laughs> I'm like, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, Dragon Ball, really fun. I'm, you know, still playing that a little bit, a little bit. Um, one thing I didn't, I didn't actually put on our list, our show notes here, is Monster Hunter. I want to talk about Monster Hunter. Oh, okay, Hunter. please do. So, I'm sorry, we're going, to, we're talking a lot about games we play, but we played a lot. Um... Monster Hunter World is not for me. Okay. I've finally accepted that um, because I got to the parts that people say you got to get to in order to like feel real Monster Hunter. Give me some, give me some deets. I just, so first of all, I'm interested. I just don't, it is not rewarding feeling to me. I don't feel like the combat is not satisfying. I don't know why. I don't okay. know what it is. Like a lot of people love this fucking game. I just don't see it. It's not. It's not scratching the itch that I wanted to. Okay. Um. But I got to the point. Like I basically got to a point where I'm fighting a monster that's actually hard instead of just like the easier guys, and it's still not. Like it, it's just not enjoyable for me. It, it feel. It almost has that destiny feeling of where it's like. If I was playing with friends and just grinding along, I, I could play it and I would enjoy it yeah. and because it's a nice social experience. But it's like to play this game as a single player game, it just doesn't have the legs for me personally. Now, the problem with it is much like Destiny, there's so much that I like about it. Like there's so much that I like about it. The way the monsters are designed, the look of them, the armor you get and can craft for yourself, the way these weapons look. The way the moves look when you're doing them, like, it is a f- cool fucking game. Okay. Like, you look cool, you feel cool doing these moves, but it never trans- translates into a fun gameplay experience okay. for me. So, I've talked about many times I need either really solid gameplay that I love or a really good story. Mm-hmm. And it's like, a really cool aesthetic isn't gonna drag me through a whole game Mm -hmm. if it's not paired with a really good story you know what i mean like the story is so non not there okay (laughs) you know what i mean like it's would you say it's just like oh there's a monster by our village let's go yeah i mean it gets more in depth but it's not not in a like substantial way Mm -hmm. it's just more like hey (laughs) here now we're doing this monster (laughs) oh this big monster that we came in on this island on Oh, we're going to have to fight him eventually. You know, it's like this whole thing. And it's just, it's not for me, man. I don't know what it is about it. It's just not satisfying to play. I'm not not enjoying my time with it. So I'm finally giving it up, unfortunately. I know a lot of people really, really like it. That well, that's what's so fun, like, that that, I, that you mentioned it today, because I was talking to my buddy, uh, my buddy John, if you're watching. Um, he, <laughs> he, uh, um, I remember I was over his house and uh, other friend was over and he was raving about Monster Hunter. He was like, this is the best game like I've ever played in my entire life. This is the best game you'll ever play this year. Like, gotta get it, gotta get it, gotta get it. And like, I was like, ah, like it's like 60 bucks. I really don't know if I want to. So I, don't, I don't think it's for me. But my buddy John was like, all right, fine. Like, I'm going to do it. And he bought it. And like, I, I watched, it took like an hour just for him to make his character. Because like, there's just so many different, you can change your eyebrows and you can change your nose and, your, and everything. And by that point, it was like already way late. I was like, oh, I'm going to go home, like whatever. <laughs> but um, so I've been asking him about it constantly. Like, and he, you know, and just like, oh, what do you think? He's the guy that got me into Assassin's Creed. So I was yeah. like, oh, maybe he'll like this game. Like our tastes don't really right. mesh. So maybe he'll love it. Um, and he kind of said the same sort of thing. He was just like, I'm, it's beautiful, but I'm really underwhelmed. I'm really. Now, the know. problem is, you said this, he likes other Monster Hunter games. 
He he likes other Monster Hunter games. Yeah. Yeah. I have that. I've not heard that much from people. Like people that like Monster Hunter games love this fucking. Game. Yeah. Like that's why I'm um that that's that's a little strange to me personally just from what I'm hearing because. Monster Hunter's always been like that. Yeah. It's always had this kind of combat. It has the same amount of weapons, same exact weapons as other Monster Hunter games. So it's like the Monster Hunter people are like, yo, this, this is, is Monster best. Hunter for everybody. Yeah. You know? But it, it, what, what I'm talking about that I don't like about it isn't even the bullshit that we've talked about before, about the, the way you get into all my matches, the menu system, all that terrible, <laughs> poorly optimized stuff. That's not even what I'm talking about when I'm saying I don't like this game. Yeah. I'm literally saying I'm not enjoying playing it. And it's a weird thing because uh, like, I compared it to Destiny 2 and I really feel that way. It's like there is so much cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, like no, Destiny, I, 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 I want to love. I felt the same way with Destiny, I, I felt the same way with Destiny like, too. Yeah. I, like everything looks really cool. Mm-hmm. All the ships look cool. All the guns look cool. They're named cool things. It's a game like, you want to love. The style is there. But there's nothing. There's but no there's substance. no substance. And that's how I feel about Monster Hunter. They're just... It's grinding to get better armor and make the numbers go up. Yeah. In a very similar way to Destiny. And that just doesn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. And and I know it does it for a lot of people, obviously. Destiny is super popular. Monster Hunter is super popular. Right. I just can't get... A, it's like I'm... It's, I just feel left out. I'm like... I want to love this game too, but I fucking don't. Yeah. It's just not fun to play. But that's fair though. So you say you're saving me sixty bucks. So thank you. Well, I mean, you might love it. I don't know. I'm just saying, it's not. It doesn't have the hooks for me to actually mm-hmm. want to play it. You know, like I wish it did, and I think it could. Like, there's a game there if it if it had a different combat system that I found enjoyable. I might love this game because. I like a lot about it. Yeah. You know, like, I really like a lot about them. And you've never played any of the other Monster Hunters? No. Okay. I've read lots about them. Yeah. I know a decent amount about them. I've never played them. Um, but, anyway, that is pretty much going to wrap on what we've been playing. But, well, something that you've been playing that we mentioned before is we're going to start a new segment. We're going to do this every single week until Dan gets through them all. We're doing Metal Gear Corner with Dan Dufrenoy. Where it's literally gonna be Dan. Welcome to what? my corner. <laughs> it's literally gonna be Dan. What happened in Metal oh, Gear this week? Let's so do this. You started Metal Gear Solid One. Yes. Well, let me preface by yeah. saying I love video games so much. I'm glad you prefaced with that. Yeah, you know, I really, we really never, do. We never knew that. And like me being like obsessive and like having to like you know if I hear a video game that I've never played. Or like heard of or whatever, like my obsessive thing in my head goes off. It's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play. So Metal Gear, you've been telling me about, and I've just been hearing about. It's probably the biggest dent in my armor that I haven't played a Metal Gear game. And so I just went out and I somehow finagled the first three. I found them all over the island. The first, second, and third. You know, it was like searching for the Holy Grail, trying to find these games. Because if you want to buy them online or whatever, it's like it's like ninety bucks yeah. if you want to. I yeah, I wish I wish we had convened earlier about it. I know, I'm sorry. I, I I, yeah, yeah, that that would have been awesome. <laughs> That's okay. I, I got I I got them. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna go through the games. I'm gonna play these Metal Gear games and see what all the fuss is about. And you know, I know you love them. Cool. So I start yeah, with the first so, one. Yeah. You kicked it off with the first one. Kicked it off with the and first one. And the way that this is going to go, the way that I want it to go is... Okay. I want you to literally go story. I want to hear what you've seen in the story, point by point, as much as you can remember, whatever you can remember. I want you to walk me through. We're going to do, like, literally, you're going to do a retelling of, of Metal what Gear. what I played. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it's not even like, oh, and then I, saw, I fought these three guards. It's like, story. Like, what did you see? What kind of crazy characters did you meet? All right. Because I fucking love Metal Gear, and I, I would love... Okay, let's do it. All right, so... Um, so, this is what I, I got so far. Mm-hmm. I'm only about probably three hours in, three and a half hours in. Um, you start off, and you get, like, a little, like, preface. Like, it's just, like, I think the year's 1995, and you're at a military base. And you're, like, a James Bond, one-man show kind of guy. You're this guy named Solid Snake, who is... This is the first game. Solid Snake... And you're set to infiltrate this base. Mm-hmm. 
and these terrorists got this their hands on this nuclear weapon called Metal Gear. Hence the Metal Gear. The yeah. Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're sent to disarm it, and you gotta. That's that's the the basics of it. So you swim in, right? You're in your scuba gear. You swim in. You get into the base. Um, and you meet all these these characters on your codec, and your codec is your uh, like walkie-talkie mm. kind of thing. You talk to a colonel, um, this girl named Mei Ling, who helps you save um, all, all these people that are kind of your um, your oracles. They kind of mm. talk to you and, and help you through your path. Um, so what happened was, is so I'm going in, and I'm told that there are only two people in the facility that have the codes to either. Activate or deactivate? I want to say deactivate. Probably deactivate. Deactivate this nuclear weapon because the terrorists got their hand on it. One was this guy named the DARPA chief. Mm -hmm. So you're told to go, you know, rescue the DARPA chief. He's being held captive in this in this bunker. So you go in, and you're doing all this stealthy stuff, and you drop in into his room, and you know you're all snake-like, and you're like, tell me what's going on, <laughs> and he's telling you that he has the codes. But there, we heard about this guy named Psycho Mantis. Mm -hmm. And Psycho Mantis was able to, like, steal the codes from his head without him telling him. Like, he was just like, you know, I'm not going to tell you, but apparently Psycho Mantis can read minds. And he got the codes anyway. And then when DARPA Chief starts to tell you all these things that, like, are going on by, like... I don't know really what's going on. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm not As it should be. really, really this sure. This is Metal Gear we're talking about. Because... It seems like there's like obviously there's the terrorists doing bad things, but then it also seems like there's this weird like government conspiracy going on mm -hmm. as well. Because as the DARPA chief starts telling you like about the government, he suffers a heart attack, which is strangely convenient for anybody that you know doesn't want to uh, have their secrets spilled. And then Snake's like, "What the hell?" So Snake leaves. He so he dies of a heart. Attack. He dies of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, and Snake runs into this girl named Meryl, I believe, but you don't know it's her yet, I don't, I don't think. She's, like, she's dressed up in this uniform, like a guard, and <laughs> Kojima being Kojima, you could tell by the way she walks, Snake is, like, checking out her ass, and he's just like, you're not a man, like, it's like... <laughs> yeah, 1995, <laughs> And, um, <laughs> and, um, anyway, she runs off. And you're like left like, and this is where like the first part of the game where I'm like, I don't know where the hell I'm supposed to go. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So I'm just like running around, dodging bad guys. And eventually the, uh, I get to this one area and I call my codec. Mm -hmm. And this is why the codec's really, really cool. And we mentioned it before. The codec's awesome because like, I don't need, even need to use a walkthrough because if I have a question about what to do in the game, mm -hmm. you have about like five different people that you can talk to, whether it's the Colonel, Mei Ling, Natasha, the weapon specialist, and they'll kind of guide you towards where you have to go. So I called, said, hey, you know, what the heck am I supposed to do? And they say, oh, just take some C4s and start blowing up walls because like, there's probably secret compartments around. I'm like, oh, okay. So I start blowing up the walls. And I get into this one area, and I see uh, this guy tied up. And apparently he's another guy that knows one of the deactivation codes. Mm. So the first guy, the DARPA chief, died and had the deactivation code. This guy, I want to say his name's Baker, but I could be completely wrong. That could just be in my head for some reason. Um, he has a deactivation code, right? So I'm about to go untie him, and this guy named Revolver Ocelot pops in. And he's like, I'm the best shooter in the world. Six shots on this gun and I got you. So you got to like fight him and you shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. And then out of nowhere, this like ninja looking thing like pops up out of nowhere. And he's got like this like light for an eye kind of thing. Cyborg ninja. Yeah. And like he does this weird like freaky. Uh. Yeah, it does. Fucking like cyborg ninja. <laughs> and he does this weird like thing where like he looks at you. And then he starts like freaking out and like leaves and stays like, what the heck's going on? So, is that actually his name? Yeah. Oh, it's actually Cyborg Ninja? Fucking Cyborg Ninja, dude. <laughs> so Cyborg Ninja <laughs> pops in and pops out of my life. Yeah, I want to say, it's, is it Baker? Okay. So anyway, I talked to Baker. I want to say that's his name. 
And I'm like, what's going on, dude? Like, you have the deactivation codes. And he goes, dude, the problem is I already, yes, Kenneth Baker. He goes, yes, I already told you. Um, I, already told the I already told the terrorists. They already figured out the, 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 the codes. Snake's like, dude, what the heck? Like, they already know the codes. <laughs> like, so uh, to clarify, are we looking for, you think we have activation codes or deactivation codes at this point? If, we're, if the terrorists are looking for the codes. They're looking for activation. They have activation codes. Thank you. <laughs> so, then Baker starts going on about how, like, oh, like, all these crazy things with the government. Like, he talks about how there's so many, like, nuclear missiles and that are just laying dormant and, like, nobody's touching them and how, like, there's all these weapons on the black market. And as he's saying this, he dies of a heart attack, too. And Snake's like, what the heck is <laughs> happening? Everybody's dying of heart attacks just when it gets juicy. Mm -hmm. So... Again, another part of the game where I'm just like, what the heck am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So right now, all I have so far is that there's... Have you run into Meryl again or it's just that one time? So this is what happens. So I'm running around. Like, what am I supposed to do? The colonel says, oh, you should talk to uh, Meryl. And then you're like, who's Meryl? It's like, oh, that girl that you ran into. Don't worry. You can reach her. Her code's on the back of a CD case. And you're like, okay, that's crazy. So you're running around and you're like, oh, wait, did I pick up a CD case anywhere? That's weird. Like, I wonder if it was behind anything. And like, no, they actually mean the freaking... The actual case. If you look on the in. back of the game case, there's a freaking picture that says Merrill, and it's like 140.18 <laughs> or something like that. Like, it's stupid, crazy stuff like that. You're like, oh. This is all peek into Kojima. <laughs> so, so I contact her and she opens up this door for me. And um, it's like this laser filled door. You go through there. And then right now I'm up to the point is as far as I've got, I'm trying to fight this guy who's in a tank. Okay. He's like this guy, he's in a tank and he's throwing bombs at me. And the last interesting bit of information I got was as I'm crossing mines, I get a phone call from a number that I don't recognize. Mm -hmm. And the snake goes like, you know, who are you? And the guy goes, don't worry, I'm just a fan. And he breaks out. So that's as far as I got. I'm still very, very like confused as to what's going on. All I have so far in the Metal Gear story, right, is that terrorists stole Metal Gear. And the two people that had information about the terrorists, had information about the government and Metal Gear, suffered of heart attacks, which was very convenient. So I don't know what's going on. Is this the dude that went in the tank? That's the dude, yeah. That's the guy? That's the guy. Vulcan Raven? Yeah. That's the homie right there. You didn't kill him yet? No, he's tough. After you kill him, something really funny happens. Really? Well, not funny. It really, really weird. Okay. Um, All right, so that's that's our Metal Gear corner with Dan. What do you think so far? So, I'm very confused, but I like it's not to the point, you know, going into these. I've always heard like, oh, these games are just extremely confusing. Like, you know, they do crazy stuff. Like, I'm confused in a good way, though. I'm confused, like in like where movies, way. like, yeah. like right now. You know, there's another thing, and obviously I'll get more to it, and I think I, I already know just by being alive for the past, you know, 20 years. Um, they keep mentioning there's this character named Liquid Snake that has the same genetic code as Solid Snake. Mm -hmm. So there's something about cloning going on, and I really don't know what that, that, that has to do with anything. And you'll find out. But I hope I did an okay job explaining it. I'm really, you know... Man, this is what we're going to do every week. You did a great job. And uh, we'll catch you with you next week. All right. It was a pleasure. That thanks was, for that joining. Was, that was Thanks, Metal Gear corner thanks for Dan. joining my corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get a little jingle for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So into the main topic for the day. Um, it's going to be a quick one. It's not going to be too, too in-depth. But um, I mentioned before that I want to talk more about Celeste, right? Yes. So Celeste, I adore this game. I think it's amazing. It has, so I'm just going to say exactly what the thing is. It has a mode in it that you can toggle on and off. Mm -hmm. It's called assist mode. And when you turn on assist mode, you choose exactly what kind of help you need, right? So this is for, we mentioned before, it's very tough. Some of the levels get really tough. If you're really struggling, you want to put on assist mode, maybe you're not the best at platformers, but you want to just play this game, this is why it's here, right? So the assist mode, it allows you to you can toggle your jumps, like your dashes, to two, three, or infinite, right? So you can infinitely dash. You can also turn invincibility on or off, right? 
And then you can also turn on, I think, stamina, infinite or not. Okay, so stamina is just being able to hold on to walls. You can turn that all the way up, okay? So you can do one of them, you can do two of them, you can do all of them. Whatever you wanna do, you it's totally customizable on what you wanna do with the sys mode, right? So I beat this game and, and I'm just gonna lay it out there and then we'll talk about lay what- Lay it out there. So that's the assist mode. I beat the game, I did the eighth, secret eighth level, I got all the crystal hearts, I got like 75 strawberries or something, not, not nearly the total amount without using the assist mode, right? Then I decided, oh, I beat like three B-sides without the assist mode. Then I was looking at trophies because I'm a broken human being. And I was like, oh, <laughs> these trophies look pretty tough. I need to get all the B-sides. These B-sides are tough. I need to get all the C-sides. I don't even know what C-sides are yet. So I'm like, okay, I also need to get all the strawberries. I'm like, that is gonna take a very long time. So I was like, you know what? I can turn the assist mode on. And I turned it on everything, and I went through, and I got the platinum in only a couple hours after that, right? I felt really shitty about it. And I didn't feel shitty about using it because I'm like, oh, I'm too good to use it. I felt shitty about it because with my psychology, I could not resist using it okay. and actually try playing these levels that I really found enjoyable throughout the main part of the game. You know what I mean? I wanted to go through these levels and play them, but it was too easy to just click the button and be like, all right, good, I can just get all my collectibles, you know, scratch that itch that's inside me that means I need to get all the collectibles and something. So what I kind of want to talk about is, so I will never deny that if you pull back and you look at this assist mode, you say that's a great fucking idea, and I'm happy they have it. Yeah. Like, there's no denying well, I'd say, that. I'd say it's great for anybody that isn't good platformers and just wants... But it's just such a smart idea. Yes, like, agreed. Let people choose how hard they want it to be. Mm -hmm. Leave it off entirely, and it's a super hard game. Put on invincibility, and you can never get hurt. Super smart. I love it. But it fucking broke me, man. I couldn't, I couldn't not turn it on to get this. And it totally, like... I would have loved to play those super hard levels. And I know it was my own choice. <laughs> yeah, because you could have, though. No, I could have, but <laughs> it was there. I couldn't, I couldn't resist it because I'm like, I know that what I really want is just to check all the boxes. It was, it's, it's a psychological <laughs> thing, dude. I'm telling you. This is not like a, like, I understand that I have free will. I can decide whether to turn it you on or not. You just love those trophies, man. But I could, like, it was like, hey, I can get through all these with this and see the ending and get everything. So much easier with this. But getting all the collectibles, mm. don't they say in the beginning of the game, it's just like, yeah, strawberries are just for bragging rights. Like, yeah. you don't get anything. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. So but it like, gets me that platinum. <laughs> what's so special about platinum? I don't know, Dan. <laughs> I don't fucking know, right? <laughs> uh, so, what's a, so what's bo is it bothering you the fact that like... There's two things bothering me. One... I didn't experience the harder B sides and the C sides the way they were intended to. And yes, I can go back now and do mm -hmm. them, but I already beat them. And to be honest with you, I platinum this game. It's going to be hard for me to justify going back into it and replaying them. Okay. Right? So many new games are coming out. Okay. I'm playing a lot of games. Okay. It's hard for me to be like, let me go back and play these really hard levels and bang my head against them. Right. So my argument is, and it's and it's not. It's not logical from like a standpoint of, hey, it's there if you want it. It's it's purely, if that wasn't there, if the option wasn't there, I would have played those levels. And I would have played them like a regular person because I didn't have the option to put the assist mode on. Okay. That's the argument. And, and I'm not saying that this mode should Wait, be I'm not sure it. what your argument is though. The argument is, if I did not have the ability to turn on the assist mode, I would have played those. So levels. you're saying that ruins because, the game? Because no, absolutely not. It ruined the experience of those levels for me because okay. I didn't play them the way they were intended to be played. You understand? Right. <laughs> what I'm getting at, Dan, I know you know what I'm saying. You just are disagreeing with me. But what I'm I do saying, know, I do know what you're saying. What I'm literally saying is, if the option wasn't there, you would have. Just... I would have played them, and I would have gotten a better experience from it. Okay. I would have. 
So you're saying by doing it on the easier mode, like, I didn't, sat, like saturates your experience? Well, think about it. I didn't even play those levels. Like, I literally was running through spikes, dashing all I wanted. Like, I actually didn't play them. Okay. Like, I was, I was listening to a podcast and <laughs> running through of this level. You know For the I mean? sake of getting the For trophy. the sake of getting, yeah. Okay. So there's a combination of things here. There's number one, trophies make you a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> and there's number trophies two. Make you a, and there's number two. I don't think it makes you a bad person. There's no like. They, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I'm saying <laughs> the fact that the trophy, w- the fact that I want, like, there's some. Obviously, there's something psychological that makes people want to get these things. Right. Like it's like OCD collectible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's a real thing. I'm right. not. It's bragging rights. Yeah. yeah it's, but it's not even bragging. Rights. It's not like I want to say, hey, everyone, I got Celeste. I got the platinum in Celeste. It's like. We just like seeing those numbers go up. You know what I mean? Like, I like being like, hey, I got everything. Yeah. To me. You know what I mean? Like, so number one, that sucks. Like, I wish I wish I wasn't, I, I could be like, I don't give a shit about that. But I was like, oh, I can really get it pretty easily. It'll only take me like a, an hour to yeah. get through all that. You know what I mean? Like, such a waste of time. I shouldn't have done that. But then the second part is, I wouldn't have, what I said before, I would not have like I would have at least tried to play those levels first if without the assist, the assist was not in the okay. game. Okay. So again, from a top level, the assist is a great thing. I'm so glad it it made it. And I'm not the person that's saying I'm so not the guy that's like, oh this is baby mode. This shouldn't be in the game. Like I'm not that fucking dude at all. But I am the dude where I could not resist turning it on, even though it made my experience lesser. Interesting. You understand? Yeah, I do understand. I'm interested, though, to counteract it. Maybe this doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But I remember when you were talking about Wolfenstein. Yeah. You were talking about how bad, like, like how tough, like, the, the, the shooting aspect of yeah. was it. And we just really wanted that story. So, like, we just put it on easy mode. Yes. Is that the same thing? Really? Uh, you know, isn't it really the same sort of... So, it's the same thing, but the way that I'm viewing this is this game, the mechanics, it's are so good. fun to play. Yeah, okay. Like, I it's really fun, enjoy yeah. them. And I love the challenge. I did the first three B-sides on my own, and it was so much fun. Yeah. Like, I once really you get, Once it. you get, like, the hang of something, you're like, oh, that's yes. cool. That's, yeah. And so, I felt really good playing them. So, with Wolfenstein, the mechanics are not fun. <laughs> like, the shooting is fine sometimes, and sometimes it's... The areas are just broken and you're getting killed so quickly. So it's like, I had no qualms about that. Yeah. If this game wasn't a good platformer, I probably wouldn't really even play it, to be yeah. honest with you. Like, Wolfenstein had the hooks yeah. for the game where I was like, I don't mind putting it on easy mode, whatever. But with this game, it's like part of the reason I love it the is because is so the platforming is so good. So what I'm saying is... I know there are other people that think exactly like me in this sense. Yeah. Like, I know it sounds really fucking stupid, the stuff I'm saying, but it's like, I know there are people that would not be able to resist putting on the assist mode and just getting that plat. Because they just want to have that those trophies. And I don't even know what it is. It's not even like I give a shit about it. It's like, there's something that's like, oh, I could get that plat. I can do that, Like, yeah. there's something about it, like, I'm telling, like, psychologically, there's something about yeah. getting that plat. Mm-hmm. Like, I've done it in games that I love because I'm like, I just love playing this. I want to play every little bit of it. But this game gave me a tool to forego that feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it gave me a tool to be like, instead of me saying, man, I really love this game. Let me play through all these B-sides and get the platinum naturally. It gave me the ability to be like, hey, you could do this in an hour instead of 20 hours. You know? Yeah. And it still satisfied me, but it wasn't an enjoyable experience in the same way that it would have been if I just played the levels. Huh. You know what I mean? And I'm you still not, enjoy yourself, though? You still- I loved the game when I played it, but those other levels, I could have enjoyed, too. And, I, and, and it's, there, it comes to a, a point where it's like, I'm not blaming the game for having those things because I like the idea of the assist mode. But there was no way for, like, what I wish it did is I wish it, when you turned on the assist mode, it turned off trophies. Like, oh, did not okay. allow you to get it. Oh, I got you. Because then, if I wanted to get the platinum, you would... I couldn't turn on the assist mode. Right, okay. For people that it's easier for, 
they can go through with the assist mode. Well, I know some like some games that, like you know you only get trophies. You know, well, you got completed on hard, completed on. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, listen, trophies in general are fucking stupid. I'll never argue that ever. Like they're stupid. Why? Why do I care? But I do, and I don't know why. <laughs> like it, it, that's why I'm saying there's a big difference between objectively looking at something yeah. and saying how you actually feel about it. Mm-hmm. Because I'm saying this assist mode is a great thing, and I'm also saying I wish it wasn't in the game for me. Okay. I really wish it wasn't. All right. Because I would have tried those, and the the biggest, the funniest thing about it is I probably would have tried those and beaten one or two more, and then moved away from the game. I wouldn't have got them all because. That would have been such a time investment in all these different games. And you would have felt play. better. You would have felt like, oh, I gave it my all kind of thing. Like I don't know if I would have. What you're saying I, is... I don't know if I would have been happier with the Platinum or if I would have been happier with those those well, extra two levels. What you're saying is you just won the MVP award, but you're taking steroids. <laughs> Pretty much. That's okay. Exactly yeah. yeah. No, but I just... I wanted to bring this up because I know there are other people that, that feel this way. Mm-hmm. And... I think it's really stupid. <laughs> like, I'm the first one to admit. I think it's a, whole, it's a really stupid thing to even say. But I think the perfect combination of this would have been, for the people that don't want it, don't make it. So, it's like, it's like if it's you're... It's so accessible. It's you so just, easy. You just go into the it's start right menu. There. Yeah, it's just, and it's like, you just hit pause and it's right there. So you I'm get, like, oh. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Like, I have to. <laughs> if I'm going to get It's like putting plan, your hand in the cookie jar. You're yeah, just like, it's ah, just, I shouldn't, but... It, it's too easy, and I just thought it, it was an interesting thing because it's, it's a phenomenon that doesn't come across a yeah. lot in games. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that actually care about trophies that are, like, super against this game yeah. because of this. And uh, you can go fuck right off if you're one of those people because that's ridiculous. Like, there's no reason to be like, oh, this is so uh, not right. You <laughs> well, can get like... trophies with the assist mode. And that's not what I'm saying at all. Yeah. I'm literally like, I wish for my own sake... That it wasn't so accessible for me. Well, that's that's honestly that's why like this is an interesting point that I wanted to bring up too. Do you ever have where you're talking to someone about a game, right? And then they ask you like, oh, well, what mode did you like beat it on, or like, or the last what one. difficulty? Oh, yeah, like, what difficulty were you on, or like, did you beat it, or like, you know, like things like that. And like, do you ever feel that sort of like, oh, well, like I love like Bioshock, but I played it on normal. Like I, I have I never, never like, you know, ever yeah, like, felt that way ever. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. Or to even me. like if there's a game that you love and like you haven't beaten, and someone's like, "Oh, you know, you like this game, but did you beat it?" And like, oh, no. like Persona Five. I love Persona Five. I haven't beaten that game. That's the dumbest line of thinking. But like, I know a lot of people think. But like, like that. a lot of people do think like it's that, so and a lot stupid. of people that I talk to, so they're like, stupid. "Oh, well, like you didn't beat it," and I'm like, "No." And then like it kind of comes across as, and I don't subscribe to this by any means, but then it kind of comes across by them at least. Like this sort of like, oh, well, then like you really didn't play the game if you didn't beat it. Or you didn't really play the game if you didn't play it on hard. Or, uh, and I think that's ridiculous. And I think that's stupid. But are you feeling that same sort of like, oh, I didn't really play Celeste because I played it on... I'm not... That's not where it's coming from at all. It's not like I'm saying, oh, uh, I don't know if it counts because I was on assist mode. First off, it counts. If you play the game, you play the game. But it's it doesn't... Like, that's, I'm not subscribing yeah, to that line of thinking. I'm that just, whole line of thinking is just trash. I agree. Like, no, period. I agree. But it doesn't make there any are sense. people like that where but they'll be I'm, like. My issue with this is, it literally gave me the ability to not play levels that I would have enjoyed playing. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. It has nothing to do with um, oh, I'm upset I beat it on easy or whatever. It's it's me saying. I would have loved to play those levels, and now I can't justify playing those levels. Yeah, and I know it's my own fault. I'm not. I'm not like fucking blaming somebody else, but I'm saying, being that it was so accessible for me, and that you still could get trophies with the assist mode on, it, it allowed me to do it, and it's something that I would have rather not have done. Yeah, I would have rather played those levels. And I don't have to. Like, I know I could have done it without the assist mode, but it is totally one of those things that's just like. And they're telling you the whole time, oh, assist mode. Like, you know, they're really. Because it's a great fucking idea. Let a 10 year old or like someone that's never played a game before play this game because you can play it on assist mm-hmm. mode and experience this really good story and really cool, interesting world. You know what I mean? Like, I'm into that. I really like the idea of this assist mode, but for me personally, a person that is capable of doing all of it. Puts a little taste, bad taste in your mouth? Not at all. It makes me upset with myself. Because I'm like, fuck, like, I wish I could have played these levels. 
there is no detriment in anything I'm saying to Celeste as a game. Would you go back None. and play Celeste in a few months? No. A but year? I, but I beat it. I, I wouldn't really... A few I, years I don't really from now? do that. A few years from now, yeah. But that's that's how it works. I, I will play a old, an older game that I've beaten years down the road. I will not go back and play an older game that's three months old yeah. that I already beat. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I might go back to it if I hadn't beaten it. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, since since on my shelf on my in my fucking virtual locker, I have one hundred percent of the trophies in Celeste. I would not go back and try those other levels. Mm-hmm. I would go back and play it from the beginning years later. Absolutely, I love this game. This is not a, this is not a knock against the game. No, no, I know, I know what you're saying. It's literally. I wish it was a little bit different for somebody with my very specific psychology because I'm saying I I would have loved to have played those levels and they they allowed me to skip them so it was hard not to mm-hmm. you know but yeah that's pretty much what I wanted to talk that's about it. That. that's a, yeah. like I said it's an interesting point I, I do agree I think there are I think people like definitely like I see where you're coming from but I think a lot of people also have that same sort of like urge that's what I'm saying. Well. I, I, I don't think it's unique to me in that I am the only person that would oh, no, not, not be able to resist. Yeah, no. I think it's hard for a person to, if you're banging your head against a B-side and you know you can put the assist on, it gets easier and easier to put on every time you die. You know what I mean? Like Agreed. Agreed. So it, it, a lot of people, I'm sure, have gotten to the point where like, they I wish I had that in like Super Meat Boy. That would have been nice. Like, that yeah, but been... I was so happy that I beat it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because like, yeah. I wouldn't have... There is, I will agree, there is that sort of, that feeling of accomplishment where it's just like, ah, yes. It's that feeling like, of accomplishment, but it's also, that is the game. Yeah, you know what I mean? So the you're best bypassing the game, the game if you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. That's what yeah, I'm trying yeah, to yeah. get All at. Right. Is, yeah, it's not good... an easy mode. It's actually bypassing the game. Yeah. You know? You're not playing the that's game as That's what I'm saying. A... Which is fine for some people. Like, the, again, I, there are many people that I'm sure are not capable of getting through this without playing 100 hours of it and learning how to play a platformer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can see that as a realistic I know, thing. Some, someone like you, you know, who, or us that loves platformers, I understand. Yeah, like, like, we, like, we can beat it. Yeah, without. <laughs> without. Yeah. But it's right there. You yeah. Know? Ah, anyway. Uh, it's fair. I, I thought it was an interesting thing That's that a great, I came it's across. A great, I think it's a very interesting point. Um, I don't want you to beat yourself up, though. Uh, I'm not beating myself up, Dan. Okay. I'm literally, I, I just wish I had the opportunity to play those levels. With... And be able to justify it. You know what I mean? I'll justify it for you. It's okay. Thanks, bud. It's Appreciate right. it. You did a good. You're a good kid. <laughs> All right. And with that, we're gonna wrap up here. Um, catch us same time, same place. Monday Again, thank you. Thanks, Shelby. Shelby. Oh, Jinx. You said at the same time, Shelby, you the man. Shelby, we love you. Shelby's, Shelby's the man. Thank you, guys. What's up, guys? It's Dan from Circle Back. Uh, I'm just here to let you know you can find everything that we do at circlebackgaming.com. If you just want the podcast, we're on iTunes. If you just want the video, we're on YouTube. So catch us either place. Thanks.